So we're going to go over the mandibular premolars now. And before we get started, uh, if you want access to any of the this picture or any of my notes or a table that simplifies everything you need to know for your premolars, I provided a link below in the the, uh, the caption section, so you can go ahead and download it and follow along the way. So let's start out with the premolars. The the mandibular first and second both are going to erupt around 12 to uh, 11 to 12 years old. The first premolars, if you remember, if it has two cusps, it's four lobes of development. The difference is now in the mandibular second premolars, you can have a two cusp form or a three cusp form. Since we have this extra cusp, it's going to make, it's going to require five lobes of development to make the three cusp form. So let's look at the height of contour. For the mandibular first, in the buccal it's actually in the cervical third, and in the lingual it's in the middle third, while in the mandibular seconds it's in the cervical, the buccal is in the cervical middle third, and the lingual is in the middle third. And let's look at the position of the cusps themselves. So now if we look at the, the mandibular first, both the cusps are in line with each other down the middle, making it that they're both going to be in the middle. While in the mandibular second, we see exactly the same thing. The difference now is when we're looking at the three cusp form, we have a cusp here, which the mesial lingual cusp is going to be lying in the mesial and the distal lingual is going to be in the distal. Just remember it says it in the name where the cusp is going to be. The difference between these two is in terms of the these cusps, if they're sharp or blunt, the first is going to be sharper than the second. And it's also going to be a pointed cusp ball. This is going to be less pointed, more blunt. The other big difference is when we're looking at the, um, the mesial cusp ridge. So if we look at this mesial cusp ridge, there's a slight notch right here. And this is in the mesial. But now in the mandibular second, if we look on the distal, that same notch is going to be there. So just remember, in the first versus the second, the notch is on the opposite sides. Unlike the maxillary premolars, the buccal, uh, sorry, the lingual cusp is significantly shorter. And if you're looking at the mandibular first, you're going to almost see that the uh, lingual cusp is not very apparent. It's it's very short compared to the, um, the buccal cusp. And another big thing to remember about the mandibular first is that the mesial marginal ridge is more cervical than the distal marginal ridge. And this is a lot of times a test question because it's very unique to the mandibular first premolars. Your other premolars, it's the exact opposite, where the distal marginal ridge is more cervical than the mesial marginal ridge. The other thing is, we have two triangular ridges that are in the mandibular first premolar. And if you remember, anytime you have two triangular ridges, that automatically means that you're going to have a transverse ridge as long as those two ridges are going to cross each other. Now in terms of the crown shape, predominantly from the proximal it's going to be a trapezoid. Um, but in the case of, of these two guys, it's actually triangular and squared. So 
the mandibular first is going to be triangular and the mandibular second and the proximal is going to be square in terms of the, uh, the, sh the crown shape. In terms of the contacts, um, from the, the mesial, we're going to be, from the mesial we're going to have the contacts are going to be at the occlusal middle junction or the middle third. On the distal, it's going to be the occlusal third. And the nice thing is you don't have to memorize two different things for the two versus the three cusp. It's going to be for the mesial, we're going to see it at the occlusal middle junction or and the middle third. And that's the same for, for um, both types. Now in terms of the coronal outline, the coronal outline for the mandibular first is a diamond. And unfortunately my drawing doesn't convey that very well. So imagine this diamond is a little further out. And this is actually a sharper pointed um, tooth. Because the height of contour is actually right here. So it creates more of a diamond pattern. Now if we're looking at the um, mandibular seconds, if we look at the uh, three cusp, the three cusp looks sort of like a square for the occlusal table, while the two cusp is more of a circle or more rounded or oval shape. And the other thing to remember, and this is predominant in your mandibular, you're going to have a slight distal tilt. And this is going back to the idea of the functional versus the stamp cusp, which we're going to get to it again. Now in terms of the crown, if we're comparing the maxillary from the mandibular, the maxillary is going to be um, having a wider facial lingual than a mesial distal crown. And the mandibular is going to have a less oblong facial lingual. On all your premolars, you're going to have the crown tapering to the lingual. It's just going to go like that. And the other thing you need to know is for the three cusp type, the grooves. So we have the mesial groove, the distal groove, and then the lingual groove. So if you ever forget, the distal is going to go towards the distal, the mesial is going to go towards the mesial, and the lingual is going to go towards the lingual. Just got to put a groove behind it. In terms of the CEJ, typically on these teeth, they're going to be very flat. You're going to see as we're going more posterior, the CEJ becomes flat uh, as we go further back. And then lastly, let's just get into some key points. So the mandibular first premolar is going to be slightly larger than the mandibular second. Um, in terms of the coronal outline, you have sort of this bump that forms, creating a smaller lingual embrasure, meaning that there's a smaller space uh, from the lingual when you're looking at the lingual embrasure. And there's going to be less of a, a lingual crown tilt. Now the stamp versus the functional cusp. I'm oh, sorry, the stamp versus the shearing cusp. The stamp, if you remember, is the functional cusp, while the shearing cusp is the non-functional cusp. So if you were to bite your teeth together and see where the cusp lie. So if we think about the buccal cusp of the mandibular teeth, it's going inside the occlusal table of the maxillary teeth, making those cusps the functional cusp or the stamp cusp. The lingual cusp, on the other hand, are hanging outside. So those are, those are going to be the non-functional cusp. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.